we're with Dan Hancock. He's a journalist and a writer at the same time. His book, um, The Village Against the World, has published in Turkey too by publishing house Metis and translated by Ali Karatay. First of all, welcome to Turkey. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, I'm really delighted to be here talking about this strange village in Spain. Uh, it seems to be of interest in all different parts of the world. <laughs> so, um, I like to start like this. Um, what is the main reason of that kind of experience has happened in Spain and in Andalusia? Well, I suppose there are specific historical context in Andalusia which led to this remarkable and unusual series of events. Um, it goes back centuries actually, not just years or decades. Um, you have a, a context where there is a large amount of farmland, not much of it is industrialized, and um, that farmland is all held by a very, very few number of aristocratic landowners who own vast expanses of land. Meanwhile, you have the poor laborers, the farm laborers, who don't own any land themselves and for many centuries lived in poverty. So that's, that's the historical backdrop that led to this sequence of events after the death of the dictator General Franco in the 1970s. What's the main difference between this experience and the traditional communist comprehension? So. In Andalusia, you have um, a historical tradition of every small town having its own self-sufficient and um, kind of closed off kind of cultural experience. Like if you are from a particular town like Marinaleda, the, this village in, in Andalusia, you are always identified with that village. Even if you go a long way away, you will always be a son or a daughter of the pueblo, they say. Um, so I think uh, there's, there's something that is, is very special to the atmosphere in that part of the world. Um, and uh, that lent itself to a kind of anarchist philosophy more than a kind of Marxist philosophy. You know, they, they are places that, that have always been very poor. And so there has been a revolutionary spirit there among the, the working classes, the poor laborers. Um, but there has never been the structures of like a, and the institutions that, that you associate with communist parties around the world. Instead, there is a, a sense of independence and a sense of um, uh, sort of separate, self-sufficient kind of um, philosophy in, 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 these, in these towns. And that's why anarchism flourished in Andalusia in a way that it has like not really flourished in many other parts of the world. It's, it's almost perfectly designed for the small peasant villages of Andalusia, I think. Here in this experience, we see that the leader, Sanchez Gorillo, is a very uh, important figure, and you call it, he's a leader like a messiah. <laughs> yeah, that's Do right. you think this is a treat for future of Marna Leda? Um, well, I think, I think the fact that they've relied so much on one man from the beginning is, is a a potential danger, yeah. Um, it's a real paradox, actually, because you know I say I say correctly that it's like an anarchist philosophy there that they are they are not something uh, community that believe in a, a really structured hierarchy, um, and yet they worship this guy uh, because he has been the one leading the struggle from the very beginning. It it was uh, he he who began the series of strikes and occupations in the 1970s and 1980s. He was the first guy elected as the mayor of the town when democracy was restored to Spain in the late 1970s. Um, and he's been mayor, so that was 1979, he was first elected. Uh, my book was written in 2012 when he was becoming older and less well, like he was suffering from some depression. It seemed like he was going to stand down uh, very soon after my book was finished and it was time for somebody else to replace him. In fact, what happened last year was there was another election and he stood for election again and he won again. Uh, and they are free and fair elections, but there is a lot of, and you know, he, but he still won easily. 
However, there are some doubts in the town about whether really it's time for a changeover. And when that changeover finally happens and he hands over to a, someone from a younger generation, it's going to be a really interesting test of whether the philosophy of Marinaleda and the, the spirit of communal, perhaps we could say communism, will outlast the leader that, that created it in the first place. So how many times did you go to Marinaleda? Um, so, I mean, I, I actually heard of Marinaleda for the first time over 10 years ago now when I was living in Seville in, in the south of Spain, the regional capital. Um, but at the time I didn't know how to get there, like I, I, <laughs> I didn't know anybody there and because I'm from London I don't drive, right? <laughs> like it's a big city, there's no need to learn how to drive um, and there's no train that goes there, it seemed like a remote place. Um, so it was only actually years later when I was in London, I always wanted to visit Marina Leda and find out about it and I met a Spanish guy who was from the next town he was stunned, he could not believe that I'd even heard of this town. <laughs> he was like, you've heard of Marina Leda? Wow! <laughs> Um, but you know, he said, "Come with me, and I'll, I'll show you and introduce you." I, I spent, I think, something like six months altogether in different chunks, like three or four chunks, um, uh, living there. And in fact, the only time of year that I have not really been in Marina Leda is in August, when it is so hot that you cannot do anything anyway. Like you, it's really just hard to even move around, let alone do interviews and you know <laughs> do some research. So uh, yeah, I spend most time there in, in the winter normally. Uh, what was your first feeling when you f get in the village for the first time? I mean, uh, the first time I, I entered Baron Eleda, to begin with, it looks like it could be any other small Spanish town. Like, the, you know, the walls are, of the houses are all white, because, again, because of the heat. Um, it's a very sleepy kind of town because it's a, a, a small kind of rural community, you know, so there are chickens wandering around and maybe some horses and stuff like that, a few cows. Um, but it's also, uh, it's also fairly quick that you realize this is not an ordinary Spanish town, <laughs> it's not an ordinary Andalusian town. So um, you, along with the kind of sleepy rural atmosphere, you, you notice things that are a bit different, like, oh look, that street is called Salvador Allende Street, or that street is called Che Guevara Street. And then you see the mural on the side of the communal uh, sports uh, arena they have, which is a painting of Che Guevara's face, which is something like 30 or 40 yeah. meters high. <laughs> so uh, the, the first reaction is, wow, this is very relaxed and calm and quiet town, but you notice that something is a bit different fairly quickly. <laughs> the results of Brexit and USA elections 2016 have disappointed many Democrats from all over the world. Do you think that Marina Leda is a hope or a solution for, uh, against the far populism? I think... Uh, yeah, I mean, we have been devastated in Britain by <laughs> many of us by the Brexit result, just as uh, people around the world have been devastated by, by the re result in America. Um, and it certainly seems like a threat to democracy in, in those countries and a bad precedent f uh, for other places. I'm thinking of France with the election coming up there and the threat from, from the fascist uh, Front National. Um, I think Marina Leda is... Um, definitely an inspiration to other places in the world. Not necessarily in terms of it being something you could replicate very straightforwardly from one town to the next. Um, for example, I find it, I found it surprising and a bit disappointing that in the 30 or 40 years they have been creating this communal uh, collectivist living that it has not translated into other towns in the region. So. If it cannot even translate into the neighboring towns, then how is it got going to happen elsewhere? But on the other hand, there is something like the greatest lesson you can learn from Marina Leda is the sheer persistence and stamina of, of fighting for a better way of life, even against the most ridiculous odds. 
it can pay off in the end. And that's that's the one thing that I always tell people about Marinelleda is if you want something that you can take as direct inspiration for, for the way that you live and your belief in freedom and democracy, it's that you should never give up because they didn't, uh, even though it seemed impossible and uh, th they won, you know, it's a remarkable story. They won uh, their struggle. Thank you so much. Thank you.